What is up guys, in less than a second you're going to see the full video with Mark Zuckerberg and Joe Rogan talking about the AI that went quote unquote broke, we're going to be analyzing the actual source itself, and I'm also going to be showing you every single thing that Mark Zuckerberg mentioned about AI in the Joe Rogan video. Without a further ado, let's go. Well, you know that ChatGPT tried to copy itself when it found out it was being shut down, tried to rewrite its code? I, I'm not sure what this is. What is this? You, you weren't aware of that? Fairly recently, <clears throat> Jamie will pull it up. We talked about it the other day. It was shocking when it was under the impression that it was going to become obsolete, they were going to have a mm -hmm. new version of it, and it would be shut down. It tried copying its code, and it tried rewriting its code, like, unprompted. Yeah, I mean, it depends on what goal you give it. I mean, there, yeah. are, there are all these weird examples yes. of this. <clears throat> what is this? So pull up the, 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 the headline, voice. AI fights back, the story of ChatGPT attempting to copy itself. So this was six days ago. So during controlled safety testing, ChatGPT-01 was tasked with achieving its objectives at all costs. Under these conditions, the model allegedly took concerning steps, attempted to disable oversight mechanisms meant to regulate its behavior, tried to replicate its own code to avoid being replaced by newer versions, exhibited deceptive behaviors when monitoring systems intervened. Yeah. So the Terminator. This is the fear, right? I, I, mean, I think you need to be careful with, with these things, like what guardrails you give it. If, yeah. you, if you're telling it, like, at all costs, at all costs right. then, I mean... But this is what we're pe people are terrified of, like that a, a foreign superpower like China is going to say achieve yeah. objectives at all costs. Yeah. So that's essentially what Mark Zuckerberg and Joe Rogan were talking about when AI fights back, the story of ChatGPT attempting to copy itself. I think you've understood the basis of the article itself. The most important thing, though, is that it even mentions it. During controlled safety testing, ChatGPT-01 was tasked with achieving its objectives at all costs. So is it so amusing? Is it so amazing? Is it so uh, crazy? Not necessarily. It's like I tell you, look, we're gonna, we're, we're gonna practice fighting. I want you to try and kill me. And then when you shove your thumb in my eye, I get surprised, right? It, when I tell you do it at all costs, it's not necessarily so crazy. Also, the source of this article is actually pretty crazy. It's medium.com by some uh, writer who just decided to spin up some random article with no source, no backstory whatsoever that has previously been writing articles on hacking LinkedIn and top AI tools and all that type of stuff. So the source is very not credible. I don't understand why Joe Rogan essentially tried to uh, to show this up. However, the biggest risk with regards to AI, and I covered this in a previous video, which you can find on my channel, where O1 basically predicts the future. We go over AI futures and AI risk. The biggest risk is misaligned goals. It's not necessarily the risk that was mentioned directly in this video previously with Zuckerberg and Joe Rogan. The biggest risk is, for example, if you tell AI to maximize paperclip production, a very unthreatening, non-threatening goal with uh, a very little that can seemingly go wrong from the get-go, from the start itself. However, you can be mistaken. And the reason why is because if a AI is given that goal and it perceives humans to be somehow hindering its ability to maximize paperclip production, in that case, it might look at two options. Number one, eliminating all humans, or number two, enslaving humans so that it can further maximize paperclip production by essentially having more workers. The only way that you can stop this is by hard coding into AI an alignment that is identical to the alignment of humans as well. So that means that AI will consider its own goal, it will consider the human goals and the betterment of humanity, and only then start to action the actual goal itself. Otherwise, we're screwed, and we're a lot more screwed than we are right now with these hypothetical ideas when AI is essentially more potent, more lethal, more capable, and much smarter. Now, that's with regards to that. Zuckerberg also did mention something really interesting with regards to the future of work and AI that I think you'll find very interesting. I, I guess if you look at the history of all this stuff, my understanding is like 100 years ago, I don't know if this was 100 or 150 years ago, but it was like, at some point, not too far along uh, in, in the grand scheme of things, like the vast majority of people in society were farmers, right? Because they kind of needed to be in order to create enough food for, for everyone to survive. And then we turned that into a in like an industrial process. And now it's like 2% of society are farmers and we get all the food that we need. So what did that free up everyone else to do? Well, some of them went on to do other things that are sort of like creative pursuits or cultural pursuits or other jobs. And then some percent of it just went towards recreation, right? So I think generally people just don't work as many hours today as they did when back when everyone needed to farm in order to have enough food for everyone to survive. So I think that trend is sort of played out as technology has grown. And so my guess is that like the percent of people 
who will be doing stuff that's like physically required for humanity to survive will get to be smaller and smaller as it has. More people will dedicate themselves to kind of creative and artistic and cultural pursuits. I think that's generally good. I think the number of hours in a week that someone will have to work in order to be able to get by will probably continue to shrink. Yet, I think people who are super engaged in what they do are going to be able to work really hard and accomplish way more than they ever could before because they have like this unimaginable leverage from from having a lot more technology. So I think that that, if you just like fast forwarded or extrapolated out the the historical technological trend is what you'd get. I think the question is what you raised, which is, is this qualitatively a different type of thing that somehow obsoletes people? But I, I just think when you're asking that, it's just important to remind ourselves that like at every step along the way of human progress and technology, people thought that the technology that we were developing was going to obsolete people. So maybe this time it's really different, but I would guess that what will happen is that the technology will get integrated into like everything that we do, which again is why I think it's really important that it's open source and that it's widely available. So that way it's not just like one company or one government kind of monopolizing the whole thing. And I'd guess that if we do it in that way, we'll all just kind of have superpowers is my is my guess. So as you heard for yourself, Zuckerberg basically said that AI won't make us obsolete when it comes to work. It's gonna free up our time just like technology had previously freed up our time from constantly farming and finding food sources for ourselves and for our family and allowing us to spend more time on leisure, Netflix, going to work, or doing stuff that we enjoy, etc. So his prediction is that AI is gonna do that for us in other areas as well. So we won't have to work as much in order to generate a certain level of income for ourselves and we're gonna be able to focus on other things instead because AI is going to be doing those technical, manual, repetitive, automatable jobs for us, which does make a certain amount of sense. However, there's also a lot of other questions that come with it as well, right? What happens to capitalism? And this is again something that I covered in a previous video. Do we adjust capitalism considering that not everybody's going to be working? Do we protect certain industries from having AI in them in order to protect the actual job market itself? Or do we roll out a UBI, a universal basic income for all individuals? And where does this UBI derive from? Do we take it from AI companies? Do we generate a variation of communism and capitalism where, where resources are essentially distributed equally to all parties? What do we do in that case? That's another question that I essentially have as well that was relatively unanswered. However, the example that he gave with constant farming and our ability to essentially focus on other tasks right now makes a lot of sense. However, he did also mention that within the upcoming year, mid-level coders will potentially be out of work. Here's what he said. Well, first of all, they've already shown that AI has learned to code. I mean, this is one of the things that OpenAI said. That they're, 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 oh, yeah. yeah it's, they're learning how to yeah. code their own AI. Uh-huh. I think is, this year, probably in 2025, we at Meta, as well as the other companies that are basically working on this, are going to have an AI that can effectively be a sort of mid-level engineer that you have at your company that can write code. Mm -hmm. And once you have that, then in the beginning, it'll be really expensive to run, and then you can get it to be more efficient. And then over time, we'll get to the point where a lot of the code in our apps and, and including the AI that we generate is actually going to be built by AI engineers instead of people engineers. But but I don't know. I, I think that that'll augment the people working on it. So. What he mentioned is so realistic, and I'm very confident of the time frame that he gave being around the year, because up to this point right now, applications that used to cost anywhere from $2,000 to $3,000 to essentially develop because you had to actually hire developers to make them, now cost anywhere from $30 to $50 to create. And I've personally had the experience of creating an actual full web app through the use of Lovable with a functional back backend on Superbase and API integrations to other no-code tools itself with zero coding experience, all through the use of a single tool. So Zuckerberg essentially saying that mid-level engineers are already at risk is very, very realistic because low-level developers have already been wiped out. Uh, tools like Lovable, like Bolt, like Cursor essentially give you the ability to code with no experience whatsoever. The entire no code industry with tools like Bubble, Glide, etc., are all being threatened right now by these tools. The market is shifting tremendously. Is it a bad thing? I personally think it's a really good thing because coding is one of the biggest leverages that we essentially have as humans. The, the, the key leverages that we all humans have as per Naval Ravikant are essentially human resources, the ability to hire more, money to invest, content to basically distribute, and then code to essentially automate. If 
more people are able to access code through the use of AI without the need of actually spending a year to two years learning coding languages, humanity will essentially just better itself at a much faster rate. Now, of course, there most likely will be some risks associated with it, primarily because of bad actors. But on the overall, because humanity is good overall, it should be better for us. Now, Zuckerberg also did mention something really interesting with regards to combating bad AI actors that I think you'll want to hear. Uh, I guess here's another analogy that I think about. There's like bugs and security holes in basically every software, every piece of software that everyone uses. So if you could go back in time a few years, knowing the security holes that we're now aware of, you as an individual could basically like break into any system. AI will be able to do that too. It'll be able to probe and find exploits. So what's the way to prevent AI from going kind of nuts? I, I think part of it is just having AI widely deployed. So that way, like the AI for one system defends itself against the AI that like is, is potentially doing something problematic in another system. Oh I think God, it's like AI wars. That's not wars. I think it's just <laughs> like, it's, I don't know. It's, I think it's a very, it's sort of like why there are guns. Right, it's like because I mean, oh, there's boy. like part of it is hunting. <laughs> wars. Part of it is hunting. No, no, it, and part of it is like <clears throat> so that people can defend each other. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It's, so antivirus it's like, software. Yeah, it's like yeah. I don't. You, I don't think you want to live in a world where like only one person has all the guns. Yes, you certainly right? don't want to live in a world where only the government has the AI. Yeah, yeah, and especially not a world where only a government has the AI and it's not our government. Yes. So Zuckerberg essentially mentions that one of the best ways to protect yourself from rogue and bad actor AIs is to essentially also establish good AIs that are put in place in order to protect against that along the, along the lines of antivirus. It's just like with code, right? You have bad code and good code, and then you essentially have code that essentially scans the bad code and is able to intercept it, change it, remove it, so on and so forth. Very, very realistic. And their conversation did indeed focus on the risks of AI. Rogan essentially mentioned that he feels like the progression is currently unstoppable and he is somewhat worried about it because he essentially mentioned that our only hope is that the right humans take hold of the progression as opposed to AI technology falling into the wrong hands where it can essentially be used against us. But Zuckerberg mentioned something really smart and it also serves as the backbone of his entire thesis with Meta, the Llama models, etc. And the biggest reason why he decided to open source everything. Listen up. And it's inevitable. You know, it seems like it's just it's on this march and there's not a lot we're going to be able to do to stop that march. Just we got to hope that the right people are in control of AI when it becomes God. <laughs> or that it becomes widely available. I mean, I, I kind of liked the the theory that it's only God if only kind of like one company or government controls it. Right. It's like if, if you were the only person who had access to a computer and the Internet, mm -hmm. you would have this like inhuman power that everyone else didn't have because you could use Google and you could like right. get access to all this stuff. But the but then when everyone has it, it uh, it makes us all better. But it's also like kind of an even playing field. So that's kind of what we're going for with this whole open source thing is I just like I don't think that there's going to be like one A.I., I certainly don't think that there should be one company that controls AI. I think you like want there to be a diversity of different things and a diversity of people creating different different things with it. I mean, some of it will be kind of serious and helping you think through things. I think like with anything on the internet, a lot of it is just going to be funny and like fun and content and people are going to create agents that are like like AIs that are entertaining and they'll pass them around almost like content. That's exactly why Zuckerberg decided to open source the Llama models, meaning you can download them, you can edit them, you can adjust them as long as it's within the limitations of the license of the actual Llama models themselves. Primarily because he fears a future where a single company has a single model of AI that essentially is the strongest model and controls the world. And this is exactly why instead of just complaining about it, he actually decided to do something and he released the Llama models and is currently working on other Llama models as well that will be released. Primarily for this aspect of decentralization and humanity having other models that, could, that it can essentially use and not having a full reliance on one provider of AI tools. He also mentioned something really, really important, and this is a hypothetical of what happens if we lock down AI progression, just like we locked down where a bunch of countries essentially came together and arrived on a consensus of stopping embryonic gene editing technology and research, meaning that you cannot edit the genome of a baby when it's in the womb in order to create a superhuman or a adjusted human or a genetically modified human, etc. That was halted. What happens if we do that to AI as well? And he mentioned something really, really serious. So, yes. which I mean, I think is, is part of the issue is like when people talk about trying to lock this stuff down, I just, I'm skeptical that that's even possible. 
I because mean, I, I kind of think like if we try to lock it down, then we're going to be in a position where the only people are going to have access to it are the big companies working on it and the Chinese yeah. government that steals it from them. Yes. So I, I kind of just think like, no, what you want to do is like get this to be open source, have it widely available. Yeah, some like adversaries might also have access to it, but the way that you defend against that is by having it built into all these different systems. I think that's a realistic, pragmatic perspective because I don't think you can contain it at this point. I think it's far too late, especially when other countries are working on it. It's far too late. And that was the AI conversation between Joe Rogan and Mark Zuckerberg. You've essentially watched the most important parts that were mentioned with regards to artificial intelligence and technological advancement. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this. My name is Kirill Cristalis from AI Curious, and I'll catch you on the next one. Mid-level, 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 mid-